Commissions. MPs and MEPs, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased that we're ending this day of discussion with a quintessentially European subject that's very dear to my heart, sustainable development, sustainable tourism. Rather. Tourism is undergoing major change in two ways. Tourism, firstly, can be a driver of significant environmental impact with overconsumption of natural resources, air, water, and soil pollution. And even some of our citizens feel they have been deprived of their normal living spaces. Uh, so we have to be aware that the continued increase in the number of travelers is self-destructive for, for the industry because the quality of the environment is specifically one of the factors of that is driving tourism forward. Uh, tourism is undergoing a radical change with the health crisis, which considerably reduced the possibilities of crossing frontiers or changing continents. Uh, the influx of international tourists, I was saying this morning, in 2021, was still 72 percent of what its level was in 2019. Uh, so we're talking about European momentum here, uh, which uh, can be an excellent opportunity for highlighting the value of our local industries, our countryside. Uh, so the question is very simple. How can we move on from the health crisis uh, and uh, institute uh, sustainable development that can use our natural resources? So I'm quite sure that to do that, we need to go local. And that is where the impetus can come from. In particular, I'm thinking about an agreement on sustainable tourism to highlight our national parks. Uh, and the EU has to support our transport systems as well. I'm thinking about uh, intermodal connections between rail and other modes of transport. Uh, and we need to increasingly interconnect our different regions and cultural heritage sites. So I'm looking forward to hear what you have to say about that. So I'll give the floor immediately to Mr. Roger. Thank you very much, um, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, MPs and MEPs, uh, along with other economic sectors. Tourism will undergo a major change uh, because of the environmental transition. Uh, this is a major challenge. The value chain in tourism today is about 10 percent of EU GDP. In some countries uh, like Greece and Croatia, that can even go up to 20 percent of national wealth. Uh, the changes uh, that uh, tourism will undergo of various sorts, uh, the need uh, to considerably reduce our GHGs, whilst maintaining mobility, that's to say our relationship with time space will change. Uh, the discovery of natural and heritage of wealth closer to their homes uh, and the use of trains more often will be desirable if we want to reduce transport-related emissions uh, because he will have a major impact uh, on the way the tourism industry is organized. It has to rethink its business model uh, to move towards greater sustainability. Also, our natural environments and biodiversity are extraordinarily attracting European international travelers. That is to say, tourism today draws on natural resources uh, which can be uh, suffering because of tourism. Uh, so we feel that tourism is not incompatible with environment. It means that we can be more environmentally friendly. So it's an environment and also an economic emergency. We need to protect uh, this priceless uh, heritage uh, and there are there is local initiatives of this that say restrict access to certain sites uh, and uh, policy policies uh, uh, that restrict uh, the influx of tourists uh, and uh, nature trails that are environmentally friendly. This means that we have to have strongly protected areas uh, uh, so that we can reduce the impact of human presence. So there are policies coming forward. Uh, 
and the values of service rendered by nature can be a, a clear asset to replacing some loss of tourist uh, income. Therefore, I'm delighted to be in this exciting session. Thank you very much. Uh, so now we will hear from our speakers. Uh, I'd like to thank them for being here and this decentralized conference. Uh, so we will start uh, with the point of view of the World Tourism Organization represented for, by its director for Europe, Mrs. Alessandra Prianta. Now, I know the challenges of uh, sustainable tourism that's environmentally friendly and compatible with uh, saving our sites and compliant uh, with our climate change commitments uh, is a major challenge for WTO. Because of pressing last minute uh, engagements, Ms. Prianti cannot be with us, but she'll be speaking to us from a distance, remotely. Excuse me. Can you hear me? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Bonsoir à tous. Uh, I, I was uh, uh, asking whether you would want me to speak in French or English, and then we all agreed I would speak in English. But uh, it is uh, an incredible pleasure and honor to be with you. Uh, I was also participating in a similar meeting last year. It's very important that uh, your, the Senate, the Congress in general, the Parliament in France, and uh, the corresponding MEPs in Brussels are paying so much attention to sustainable tourism. Needless to say that now in these current times when uh, the war is actually at our door, sustainability has uh, maybe a slightly different meaning because uh, the, the survival part of uh, tourism is now becoming even more stringent. But uh, we are the positive industry. We are the industry that is supposed to bring hope to the lives of people, and therefore we have to keep looking forward. I was very happy to learn that today amongst you is also a fantastic re uh, person and a dear friend, former Minister of Tourism uh, of Greece, Heri Theokaris. And uh, with Harry specifically, we've been holding hands uh, with you and WTO in order to make sure that uh, when the COVID-19 uh, struck and everything was completely stopped, uh, the, there was a recovery plan that was shared amongst everyone. I would like to praise and remind everyone that Greece was among the first members who proposed the use of the digital passport. So therefore the need for a stronger coordination and collaboration at a European level for first and foremost, because we serve as an example for the rest of the world and therefore for all the rest. Now, what is incredibly um, outstanding is that the, the situation in Ukraine, and we were able to note this just a few days ago when we were in Dijon for the EU27 uh, um, tourism meeting uh, at the kind invitation of the French presidency, Europe has never been so united. So this is really the moment where we have to continue asking for this unity to be as well um, understood and mostly implemented at all levels. So we have to continue fighting for harmonized protocols. We have to continue uh, stressing for the importance of having recovery plans at a national level, which do encompass tourism. And last but not least, we cannot stop asking for tourism to be represented at EU institutional level, whether it's going to be a commissioner or specific funds devoted from it directly from Brussels. But tourism needs to become central, as it is central in many other countries of the world. Talking about the challenges of sustainable tourism, we have many ways in which we've been addressing those. But I want to report to you something very tangible. During the years of the pandemic, we've experienced a decrease in international arrivals of over 86%. 86% means that the industry is at a stop. It means that SMEs are dying. It means that the whole tourism sector is an absolute uh, disaster. We've now recuperated because we were able during the summers with uh, a little bit of reopening with, you know, coordination with between the vaccination policies and the borders policy, we were able to recuperate a little bit. So now we were just checking the January data 
and the January data speak about a 68%, which means we've been recuperating almost a 25% out of everything. Now, what is interesting here, which is I think the most important uh, element that we need to uh, stress upon is that while we were observing the destinations reopening or doing attempts at reopening in the summer of 2020, but mostly in the summer of 2021, We've noticed, and it's a mathematical correlation, that those destinations that were choosing sustainability as a core element of their policies were the ones that were able to reopen in a more organic and I would say holistic way. So a more coordination also between their own levels of administration and the management of their policies would actually serve a whole lot. So sustainability for the UNWTO cannot anymore be a choice. It has to be something that has to exist practically at all levels of policies, from the very local, regional, super regional, and definitely national level. Sustainability in its three forms, which as you know, is economic, social and cultural, and environmental, is uh, has to become a, former, a forming element of our lives of our lives as citizens, of our lives as tourists, or of our lives as decision makers and representative of institutions. We at UNWTO, specifically for the climate emergency, which, which for us is the, the second most important, let's say problematic that we have in the whole world together with, the, with um, the unfortunate case of the pandemic and now the war, we've launched something called the Glasgow Declaration. The Glasgow Declaration, which we launched in the framework of the COP26 is a declaration that aims at basically creating the commitment from the destination levels, from the country levels, from the private sector to uh, seriously address carbon neutrality and specifically for the impact that the tourism sector has on the generation of the carbon footprint. Having said that, We've also uh, created several initiatives like the Plastics Initiative or the One Planet under the, co the coordination of UNEP, UNEP because we do believe that we need to get some framework, regulatory framework and some objectives ready for accomplishment. As I said before, by the public and the private sector. Last but not least, I would like to uh, close my address by reminding all of us that there are some SDGs, as we call it, that are of crucial importance at the moment, and we really cannot neglect them, and we consider them as the key to resolve the situation. One of them is gender equality. 53% of the employment in the tourism sector comes from women, and so we need to con continue putting this really at the center of our recovery policies. The second one is innovation and education, which have to be really the tools uh, through which we also empower the younger generations and give them hope through tourism. And the third one is the partnership between the public and the private sector, which is the real key to make things happen. Thank you very much. I hope uh, I didn't take too much of your time. I really would like to thank you for having us. I also bring you the salutations of my Secretary General, Paul Lukashvili, who at the moment is traveling, so wasn't able to address you directly. Uh, merci beaucoup, bon travail. Uh, Thank you very much. Uh, have a good conference. Uh, you need us. Have a great discussion. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much to Priyanka for that very informative presentation. Thank you. The other global player whose concerns are the main focus of this. Obviously, NESCO, it's a DG, Mrs. Audrey has always asked me to apologize for it, but unfortunately, she has other prior press engagements. So she's asked Mr. Lazo Elundu Asomo, who's director of the UNESCO World Heritage Center, uh, to send a video message that we will now Mesdames listen to. Ladies and gentlemen, members of parliament, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the director general of UNESCO, Madame Audrey Azoulay, Grand plaisir it's my great pleasure to address you this meeting this afternoon. 
before you have your debate on the future of sustainable tourism within the European Union. It's a great pleasure to see this initiative take force, looking at the economic and environmental challenges which are linked to tourism. At this period of the COVID-19 pandemic, it is wise for us to look again and to think about the basics underpinning our program for, sustain, for, for developing tourism in the future, which can only really be developed as a sustainable effort. As you know, before the COVID-19 pandemic, tourism was a very large sector of the economy in Europe. Europe is the most visited uh, tourist destination in the world. According to the World Tourism Organization, arrivals in uh, Europe fell by some 70% in 2020, with a 4% increase in 2021, which is far below the situation that we were in before the health crisis. Now, apart from the impact this has on national economies, this crisis has uh, hit the most vulnerable areas of the, our society. I'm thinking about local populations who have been hit uh, with the full impact of this drop in activity. However, the pandemic has also shown the very close links between culture, the heritage, and terrorism. And it showed how independent the, we are on the re, uh, recovery. Now, the main actors in tourism and heritage uh, would all agree that this uh, slowdown in traveling and tourism can actually lead us towards a different approach, which is more uh, inclusive, sustainable, and fair. That's why UNESCO has decided that we will make uh, tourism, uh, return tourism to serve communities and um, heritage, and it will enable us to actually preserve the natural and immaterial heritage of our continent, while at the same time protecting the planet and uh, very much in keeping with the objectives of sustainable development. Through its program of uh, world heritage and its sustainable tourism, UNESCO provides all of the players in the tourism industry a, a platform to promote tourism and sustainable tourism in order to maintain and support uh, communities which find themselves on the sites of the cultural heritage. Working alongside key players in the public and the private sector, UNESCO is able to develop tools and strategies to manage visitors' flows, to improve the quality of the experience for the visitor, and to also, at the same time, promote the conservation of the sites. Although the travel sector and the tourism sector are starting now to pick up again after the impact of the crowd, uh, COVID crisis, there seems to be an emerging agreement between political leaders and also the tourism industry that a return to business as usual is very unlikely and not desirable. Those who manage tourism and heritage sites will have to, however, therefore, work together to learn lessons from the COVID-19 crisis and rebuild stronger communities, more resilient communities, focusing on culture and heritage as being the central focal points of worldwide tourism. Developing capacity to improve the management systems, developing new products, and interpreting these things in a different matter are going to be key to the, our success. Let me give you some examples of what we're doing. UNESCO and the Expedia Group has been encouraging hotel groups to commit to specific actions which are transparent and, re and uh, feasible within the framework of UNESCO's uh, program for our sustainable travel pledge. 
hotels which participate in this activity reduce the activity, the use of uh, single-use plastics in their hotels and, uh, and and waste. So they're trying to save energy and water, and they promote the sustainable development in the local communities. Since it started in Th in Thailand, this pledge from UNESCO has spread across the world, and some 10,000 uh, hotels have now committed to this pledge. Our largest companies in Europe, such as Accor, the Melia Group, and Iberostar uh, Hotel Groups, are, have all signed up to this pledge. UNESCO. UNESCO and the Expedia Group have, are also supporting the, the eco label, the European eco label, and will have, have, have transformed hotels that have signed up to this eco label to to uh, partners in the UNESCO pledge. So maintaining as well this promise to reduce single-use single use plastics and to support the local economy in Thailand and elsewhere. In Germany, the Minister for Development and Cooperation has also supported the, extent, the use of the UNESCO pledge for sustainable uh, tourism in seven countries. And they have offered a number of uh, me mechanisms for support to help overcome the impact of COVID-19 on tourism and our heritage. This project is aimed at developing inclusive and sustainable travel, while at the same time protecting the living standards of the local, environment, local uh, communities. This is all part of a broader effort from the German uh, government to try and ensure that we have a solid and resilient uh, recovery in the tourism and travel sector. And finally, our platform, the Road of the, the, of, the of World uh, Heritage, which is supported um, through by the UN, uh, it works along with all of the heritage sites and encourages vis visitors to visit to or to travel differently and to have a more in-depth experience by understanding and discovering local uh, traditions and and um, uh, the heritage through a particular uh, four particular areas of um, travel sovereign Europe romantic Europe um, ecological Europe and others. So the impact of, of COVID on the cultural tourism here in Europe has been a, a really a first in our history. In order to relaunch our activities in a solid manner and to develop tourism correctly, we've got to actually broaden the commitment of our communities in how we manage and develop tourism in the future. I'm very pleased that this debate is being held here in the uh, Loire Valley. The Loire Valley is part of the heritage list since 2000. The, Val the, the Loire Valley is uh, somewhere where we see both architectural excellence, culture, and uh, gastronomy. And we've done this for a number of centuries. Now we're working together to protect this heritage, while at the same time promoting its dynamic future. You can count on UNESCO's support to continue working along with the European Union in developing a new approach to tourism, sustainable tourism, while at the same time strengthening the local communities. Thank you for your attention, and I do wish you a very successful afternoon. Thank you. Merci. Trying to make tourism more sustainable means that, that it's more compatible with the survival of our planet, and it means that we need to change our uh, tourism uh, 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 reflexes, making sure that we're more respectful of the environment, that we travel differently. And it's going to actually affect those people who actually, uh, on a daily basis, welcome tourists. That's why I'm very pleased for us to hear from one of the first of the key actors in this area, Mr. Alexandre dessin barrière who is the vice president in charge of strategy and development in the Barrière Hotel Group. So, I give you the floor, sir. Madame la Présidente, Mesdames et Messieurs le Parlementaire. Madam Chair, Members of Parliament. It's a great pleasure to be with you today to have this exchange of views on a subject which is very close to my heart, and that is the, the tourism and the environment. These are indissociable. On the one hand, travel 
discovery, movement. On the other hand, we have the environment. Uh, that's where all of our tourism activity is developed, and that's where our future really lies, the future of tourism and the planet. We all know that the tourism ec ecosystems are the most vulnerable to uh, climate change. Lack of water, changing um, coastlines, uh, rising rising water levels affect all of the areas that that are involved in tourism, and it touches upon many many jobs. Over the last couple of years, we've seen the, the image of tourism really be tarnished. We've seen over pollution, we've seen degradation of sites, we've seen pol uh, waste water waste. Um, Pollution. So we've seen that something's not right, something's not working. The way in which tourism has been organized in recent years has not been successful. And yet that has made us all become much more aware of the issues at hand that man, uh, because, uh, because of the, the hybris of man, um, over, over many years has, has, has led us to where we are. Now, we think that the, uh, the, the, the crisis has, has led us to understand where our limits are. We are trying to play with the nature. We are trying to interfere with things as we see fit, pushing the limits of what is possible. But no, nature will always have the upper hand. One, at one moment or another. We've got to understand that we need to work with the earth, that we need to cooperate with it and not try and change things, not just for our own pleasure. In 2002, the President Jacques Chirac at the time said that our house was burning down and we were looking elsewhere. That was 20 years ago. I think facts have shown that we have not yet understood the very importance of those words. Our house is burning down and we are the ones who set fire to it. It's long time that we, it's high time that we actually reacted with the very strong measures. The tourist industry has got to take on its responsibilities and participate in actually putting out the fire. We have got to call ourselves into question. The Barrier Hotel Group that I am the, have the honor of representing here towards in front of you is a, an Anglo-French group. It's a family group. This year we are celebrating our 10th anniversary and we are developing it uh, more internationally. There are 7,000 men and women who work on a daily basis with us to make sure that people have memorable experiences at our in our in in, uh, in our hotels, we have um, palaces, historic uh, hotels in very uh, in, uh, historic areas where which have been key to the tourism over the last 20 years. In our palaces, we have actually welcomed people like Winston Churchill, the Shah of Iran, and even Barack Obama. We've got 47 restaurants and bars which serve. Um, uh, we also have Fouquet's on the Champs Elysees, a brasserie, a, a famous French brasserie, which has been there for over 20 years. We have 33 casinos, eight in France, which generate some 500 billion euros of um, income for the, the, which is all, of course, taxable income in France and elsewhere. We also have developed uh, it, the Fouquet's uh, brasserie in Abu Dhabi, for example. So it's very clear that any thought about our um, our trade and our um, industry, how we can be more respectful for the of the environment, is important to us. Our group, a family group, which is born, which is based in tourism and has a long-term future. We are the fourth gener generation of this family group, and our ambition is to be able to transmit what has been given to us to the fifth generation of our family. The ecosystem and the environment might be, uh, might have been, uh, have been um, destabilized, and that's going to affect our entire, uh, our entire uh, li livelihood. But of course, it's also as a, as, a, as a citizen and as a responsible member of the human race that we've also got to take on board the challenges to preserve our environment. Of course, we have already started a number of efforts. We have already uh, mapped out the areas of intervention. We've been working with local, local groups set up partnerships with many other associations in the field. The Barrier Hotel Group has um, signed up to a cert uh, ISO certification. We're working towards a more global uh, approach to um, pr uh, the um, protection of the environment on the basis of ISO standards. We're working with our workers, our the directors, the boards, the environment, and our clients, of course, to achieve all these. But our actions, and I must say, I must admit that uh, we have got to be humble in this as well, because our efforts are not really sufficient to meet the challenges or the, 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 the time that is pressing. We're not actually uh, doing enough to be actually, um, to meet our, our, our um, our 
the brand mark that we have. So how do we actually become more more not more sustainable? How can we offer a, 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 a service which is sustainable, French, and, and uh, which provides activity and excitement and an adventure to the citizens, making sure that we actually respect the environment? So the question is whether uh, tourism and leisure and, 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 and adventure is, is indispensable. Is it perhaps futile? And should we be limiting our offer to what is essential, what is necessary, and what we can do to save the planet? I think that we shouldn't forget the exceptional nature of tourism. It's exceptional uh, and it's necessary. We, need to, we want to travel, we want to discover new landscapes, new cultures. That is not in itself futile. It, it enriches each one of our existences. It enables us also to become better people. Mark Twain himself said that to, to travel meant you, that you were able to overcome prejudice and open your, your, your minds. Emil Zola said that nothing actually develops an intelligence better than traveling. We've got to try and reach an agreement where, we're, where tour, tomorrow's tourism can be developed so that our children will have the same opportunities as we. We've got to think about how we can do this and not what we're going to do to so that we're able to actually bring about this ecological change so that we know how to um, how to live and how to travel. The question of sustainability also looks at the, the, local, gen, the local population. We've got to organize activities with regard to the specificities of each uh, local area. The public uh, authorities and the tourism bodies have got to work together to enable us to do more to protect the environment better. And we've got to protect those who actually make our territories and our local communities grow and live. That is what we all benefit from. We've got to give responsibility to, to all agents. We've got to um, also put the constraints in where they're necessary. We've got to constrain the tourist industry, of which I am part, to do to do their part. It's time for us to act. We have choices and obligations ahead of us. The obligations that we have vis-a-vis -vis our children and our grandchildren were at a crossroads. Just last week in, Arctic, in, in Antarctic, they, they, they measured something like 30 degrees higher, more than warmer than, than normal. It is now that we have got to take the decisions that are required to actually make these changes. Otherwise, will we be able to look each other in the eyes? Uh, the problem of our time is that the future is no longer what it used to be. That's what Paul Valéry had to say on the matter. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour Thank you for your comments. It's reassuring to see that the bod bodies involved in tourism are now becoming more uh, confident that they're able to, to act against the challenges. But a number of solutions are coming up, and we have heard a number of the proposals from uh, the, the major players. We're going to conclude with a, com a, a contribution from Jean-Louis Perrier, who's um, the representative for the um, a solid for tourism based in solidarity and sustainable development. I give you the floor, sir. Madame Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, chairs of the committees, members of parliament, thank you for the opportunity that you're giving me to speak to you today as the chair of the Association for uh, Fair and Solid, uh, for, solid for Tourism um, Based in Solidarity and Fairness. You might know that you might know me, but I'm, I'm just a countryman. I'm a, I'm a farmer, in fact. I have an organic farm. I have, I have a bovine farm, and we have actually been welcoming tourists to our farm for over 20 years. Tourism, which is uh, fair and based on solidarity, uh, puts the tourist at the center of the trip. It's the meeting of, of an individual with a, a culture and, and, um, and uh, Heritage, and it's a part of a welcome. Uh, it's it's a, a welcome that is given to um, tourism to tourists by the people who live there. It's based on, the, on on fair trade principles to make sure that the tourism, which is developed in such a way that it is seen as a partnership, a fair and balanced partnership between the people in the field, those the local people, and actually creates a, an exchange and a, and interface between them and the um, tourists. Looking at the, letting them see the way of life, the local way of life, and creating as little upset as possible, but at the same time maximizing the impact this can have on the territory uh, and uh, with the respecting the economic, social, and environmental balance. 
These principles behind fair tourism can actually be applied to all types of tourism. So it can be lodgings, it can be the way in which or, uh, events are organized, it can be visits, it can be mobility, but also it can also concern the food, uh, uh, the high quality food that has been offered, making sure that we have short circles, that we have a low impact um, supply of uh, uh, food and restaurants. Now we all want to move towards a, a, a more e ecological economy and the fair trade, for fair tra tourism looks at this in, as a whole in all its complexity. The economic and the social dimension are taken on board. Uh, we, we've got to look at how this, how tourism impacts in both of these areas. Tr free, uh, tr fair tourism can actually offer a number of responses to the challenges that are facing us, how it impacts upon the territory, how the different, um, the, dif the different roles that our network has been playing over the last 15 years has enabled, first of all, by uh, accompanying the, the increasing demand of tourism for a more responsible tourism, which has actually been, uh, been accelerated by the, by the crisis, the health crisis. We've had a number of awareness campaigns and we've tried to educate the consumer. Thanks to this, there has been a change of mentality which has been actually underscored by the pandemic. So fair tourism is actually a good uh, marketing um, label as well. For, and, and we've seen this, this has been true, because we've seen the two different key areas for French tourism, so that's the rhône alp region and the Bretagne region, the Brittany region, have actually adopted our brand. Also, we want to structure the fair trade for tourism um, sector by providing a label, uh, the TES, S, which is the French initials for um, fair trade and sustainability. And so this is a sector which is going to grow but needs support to make the sector more resilient fa faced with the crisis. We want to promote uh, more demand and more responsibility within tourism by training social entre uh, enterprises and SMEs in the area. These are the key players. If they actually invest in sustainable tourism, they will be bringing more tourism to different sectors, such as uh, the um, agricultural um, area, um, the rural tourism, and uh, changing of the way in which we travel. The, our our organization has been working within the European Union, and we believe that we have an important role to play in the further development of the tourist sector. However, when you look at the present crisis that we are confronted with, and crises which li are lined up ahead, perhaps because of climate change or health threats or other security issues as well, and we know under, we understand how difficult that's going to be, the, the recovery effort is going to require a certain transformation of the way in which we produce and consume tourism in, in all our territories. How can we move forward? From our own experience, we have understood that the, although we have many uh, agents involved in sustainable tr tourism, we would ask you to think about the following when you develop your tourism plans. One, if we want to promote sustainable and fair tourism, we need to look at the professionals in the tourism industry and also the consumers. Awareness raising in favor of the environment can only be done if we understand the socio and societal impact of tourism. The second report of the IPCC has said that there cannot be any ecological transition without a social transition, and we also need solidarity. We also have got to support the various players of sustainable tourism financially, be this through establishing public uh, procurement rules and financial aid at the, for the recovery for those who are involved in the just transition. The small and medium-sized companies and the players from the social enterprise and the tourism industry all need to be involved uh, with and, and receive uh, financial support from the professional sector to enable them to develop the sector and provide information to the consumer. And as you're well aware, creating supply means creating the need or the demand for it. We have a responsibility to create an offering which should be more sustainable. Finally, supporting the demands of the labels and in their diversity 
and combating against uh, the greenwashing and the fair washing by putting into place uh, an appropriate legal framework. We're delighted that France today uh, publicly acknowledges the label of fair trade, but this has to guarantee the independence of the label with regard to private companies who use it and uh, the mechanisms for checking and controlling and checking and drill, the, the whole uh, sector from top to bottom. This whole concept, uh, which has been driven by the TES and ourselves, but also by the vision of a fair uh, France's fair trade uh, uh, label, uh, the cooperative group for uh, representing uh, France's group for um, fair trade. We are ready to build with the French public and European public authorities, uh, uh, build shared initiatives, joint initiatives. We are moving forward with some French regions, which I've already mentioned, Brittany, uh, the uh, Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes, L'Occitanie, but also at a European level within the international world, uh, international tourism organization, ISTO, with Italian players like La Italia, Spanish players, uh, for the Foundation for Sustainable Tourism, or the German uh, body, the Bourself. Now, what this is about today is about going further, uh, putting into place uh, re uh, genuinely national and European strategies to, f to ring in the changes necessary for an ecological, economic, and social uh, transition to, to support all actors, which are frequently SMEs, small and medium-sized businesses, which are driven by the passion for this work. We encourage European and French public authorities to think along with us for upon initiatives to develop sustainable and equitable, to develop sustainable and equitable tourism on your soil and on European soil. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Ferry, for your testimony. Now, Jury, we're coming to the moment of discussion, and I go to look at the parliamentarians have their names on the agenda, Mrs. Lucy Potokova from the Czech Republic. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, I would also like to contribute to this discussion with my opinion on the matter. As much as the question of sustainable tourism may seem marginal in the light of the current crisis, I still consider it very important to keep walking on the issues that are connected with the protection of our nature and our cultural, cultural heritage. But it is, it is not only the nature that have to be protected. We should also support people, our citizens, living in natural parks, in remote areas, whose main and sometimes the only income comes from the services connected with the tourism. And sometimes these people are, are the only community that resides in such an area, especially in mountains and cross-border regions. After the epidemic of COVID-19, we can observe quite substantial outflow of young families and generally young people from such villages and small municipalities because, obviously, running this kind of business, such as small restaurants, bike rentals, guiding services, ski schools, is now seen as unstable and uncertain. On the other hand, during the epidemic, a lot of people escaped towns and agglomerations to seek healthy environment and spend some time outdoor in self-catering accommodation facilities or in caravans and campers. It is without any demand for services from local people. This eventually led to a very interesting paradox situation, overcrowded touristic destinations, especially in peak times on weekends, but much less people working in the service sector. So now we are reporting two problems, over-tourism and depopulation. I give you one example from my country. I am a mayor of a small village in the middle of Krkonoše National Park in the Czech Republic. This park is situated in two countries, bigger part in the Czechia and the smaller part in Poland. The park covers a relatively small area of about 400 square meters. Annually, over 10 million people pass through the combined Czech and Polish sites of the Krkonoše Mountains. Thus, this area belongs to a group of the most visited national parks in the world. Just for comparison, the Yellowstone National Park with the area of 9,000 square kilometers is nearly, is nearly 10 times bigger, but it reports only 5 million visits for the last year. 
Let's admit that our nature pays a cruel tax for such a popularity. This high number of visitors and the unmastered conception of tourism have left fatal trails on the sensitive ecosystems. This trend is definitely not sustainable. So what can we do? It is definitely a challenge and a long time run. I see a great opportunity in promoting closer cooperation in cross-border regions where communities, environmental protection authorities and municipalities have to share knowledge, capacities and methodology more efficiently to support both environmental protection and local inhabitants. We, as decision makers and stakeholders, should more actively support development of high-speed optical infrastructure, which can enable better distribution of tourists all over the area and which would provide jobs to local, especially young people in low seasons. We should encourage and support local municipalities to install modern systems, allowing ecolog ecologically friendly multimodal transportation systems for visitors and residents. Guests and visitors should be engaged in these efforts, not by sanctions and fines paid to the National Park Services, but in a positive way. And obviously, we must raise awareness about this topic at all platforms, starting from elementary educational facilities to the seminars and lectures for elderly people. Only in this way we can preserve our national heritage, but also stimulate local economy and make travel industry more sustainable. Merci pour votre attention. Merci, cher collègue. So, thank you, dear colleague. The floor is Mr. Kessis Aziz of Lithuania. Ladies and gentlemen, my colleagues. <coughs> Today, the whole planet facing large scale climate change crisis. European countries are already suffering uh, an enormous uh, losses. Me and file, we are sending billions for fossil fuels to Russia. The money goes to finance the war in Ukraine and the geopolitical ambitions direction against us. Really, it is who have paid for Russian military campaigns. Russians' attacks of 24 February 2022 on Ukraine result in a humanitarian crisis. In the face of the war, the principles and sustainability, which include peace, justice, and life on earth, and which have so far been taken and granted have become more important than ever. In the face of the current events, and Green Deal is of, uh, of paramount importance, allow me to, to, uh, mem to mention of few figures. The financial, uh, financial uh, damage of the European Union uh, caused by extreme weather events due to climate changes and amounts to our, our uh, 12 billion in, uh, uh, per year. In estimate that European's uh, tourist sector and coastal communities already uh, support the losses of, of palm euro 630 million annually is the result of plastic. In 2020, the tourism sector accounted for 1.70% of Lithuania GDP, around 3% of GDP before the COVID-19 pandemic. I am uh, certain that the tourist sector in Lithuania and all Europe Union countries will be subject to event greater losses due to Russian Russians war in Ukraine that due to COVID-19 results here. Lithuania alone will lose over 45 percent for tourists as a result of the war. On, on uh, 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 
on, 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 on my part ask how Russia will compensate for the uh, damage it has caused in the Europe tourism sector. The dream deal is not based uh, southerly. It's good wishes for dreams in yes, uh, sound economic uh, basis. The Green Deal for energy will uh, reduce the European Union's uh, demand by more than that in 2030. The transition to a, a circular economy will also review much less fossil resources from their countries. Really, I think that Green Deal in energy sector is our independent. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Now the floor goes to Mrs. Yanakis Gabriel of Cyprus now. Tourism is a significant economic factor in the world's GDP. The pandemic has forced many business in the tourist sector, restaurants, hotels to shut down, but also this has caused unemployment for many people. European Green Deal for some countries will be even more catastrophic, catastrophic unless some crucial factors are taken into account. Under the European Green Deal, tourist industry and the tourist supp supply chains will be asked to con contribute a, a large proportion of their capital and income to confrontatory policies, while at the same time they are trying to keep their business to work. Most probably, the cost of this transition will be paid by the consumers and travelers. I am afraid to say that, the, that in the coming years, Tourism will be only for rich people. For islands and remote countries like Cyprus, the results will be even more severe. Cyprus is only reachable by air and sea, while at the same time, it is net important for of fuels, raw materials, heavy machinery, and transportation equipment. Since under the Green Deal, aviation and shipping will be called to increase. They are cost of running, dramatic rise of prices to the basic goods and services, and to the cost of living will occur. In addition, travel tickets and services will also be increased with further negative results to the tourist industry. If European tourist industry takes off on resolution related costs, then the foreign competitors do not bear, they will be become less competitive both domestically and abroad. But most importantly, the Green Deal should be considered and the foreign policy matters since climate change is a global problem. A transition away from carbon that will only focus on Europe would not make any difference as Europe accounts for less than 10 percent global greenhouse gas emissions. For all these reasons, EU should adopt more co comprehensive policies and measures, develop new, new models of financial and technical assistance, new trade and investment agreements to support sustainable investment development and EU Green Deal. Finally, for the development of these policies, we should pursue the active involvement and consultation of all stakeholders. National parliaments have a decisive role to play to the creation of synergies and the formation of strategies. Exchange of views as today meeting can be very useful and supportive. Thank you. Merci, cher collègue. La parole est à Monsieur Thank you, dear colleague. We now give the floor to Mr. Elias Mirianthus of Cyprus. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Dear colleagues, after the Russian invasion and the ongoing war in Ukraine, the sanctions imposed and the sharp rise in fuel price, it is expected that the tourism industry will suffer from a new shock after pandemic shock. 
For these reasons, it is necessary to address the immediate socioeconomic impact of the war in Ukraine, and we expect that European Union support toward this aim. The impact of pandemic and war in Ukraine on humanity and on the tourism are devastating. Hopefully soon, the crisis we are going through will pass and tourists will reduce. The intense tourist development has severe environmental impact. To prevent the negative effects of the tourism, we must develop policies to support local authorities and small and medium-sized enterprises to secure that their operation has a minimal environmental impact. We must finally introduce changes in order to reduce the environmental impact of the tourism industry and to address climate change. The European Union support to the protection of the natural areas is more important than ever. Responsible and green tourists can support the recovery of the European economy following the pandemic. It is particularly important in less visited but the, but put the, but the uh, culturally rich destination across Europe. Measures must be finally taken in order to ensure that the tourist industry must make optimal use of environmental resources, respect the socio-cultural authentic of the host community, and conserve their cultural heritage and traditional values, and also ensure that viable long-term economy operations. It is necessary to develop a strong agro-tourism and sustainable hospitality infrastructures to enhance the added value of the tourist sector with emphasis on the countryside, mountainous and remote area to promote circular economy hotel establishment and to enrich the tourist product in rural area. Achieving sustainable tourism is a continued process and it is required constant monitoring of, ICTA, or of impact, introducing the necessary preventives and corrective measures however necessary. Member states shall remain focused in devising sustainable tourist actions planned in line with European Union initiatives. Dear colleagues, we must finally rise to the occasion and steer the tourist ecosystem toward more sustainable, smarter and resilient practices addressing sensitive issues such as over tourism and climate change. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Now I give the floor to Mr. André Korobenik from Estonia. The uh, recent times pressed uh, few challenges uh, for uh, tourism in Europe and uh, for the whole world. Uh, however, the pandemic uh, provided also additional possibilities as well. Uh, there was a major stress for the economy, but uh, the recovery was steady, and I believe the reason is uh, the fact uh, that the work efficiency has been improved greatly. No more uh, long meetings abroad. A lot of time spent traveling before can now be spent doing meaningful stuff. I love to see all of you here. Uh, in this beautiful environment, and thanks a lot for the hosts uh, for uh, this possibility. Uh, however, I uh, don't see the uh, conference tourism uh, gaining back the importance it used to have uh, just a few years ago. Different formats like uh, startup pitches or uh, international board meetings are uh, way more convenient online, and I believe they will stay online. Uh, but the traditional recreational tourism uh, will come back, and I believe the uh, it's, this comeback will be impressive. That, of course, if uh, Russian invasion in Ukraine will be halted in the nearest future. Uh, in Estonia and in most of uh, Europe, uh, the government's uh, support funds were spent mostly on uh, smaller uh, touristic objects uh, during pandemics. Uh, this helped uh, to drive people out of uh, uh, overcrowded uh, tourist attractions like uh, Rome or, say, Paris, and uh, I hope the trend will stay the same. People will start doing more uh, short distance vacations, and this is also a very important factor for, for the Green Deal. Uh, when you travel by plane, the uh, carbon emissions per one kilometer per passenger uh, are about the same as uh, when you travel by car. Uh, however, when it comes to vacation, your flight will be way longer than your car ride. 
so your carbon footprint by flying will be some 10, 20 times higher. And if you decided to travel mid-range distance by train, as we will do today, your carbon footprint per kilometer will be five times lower, five times. Thanks to the pandemic, we, dis we discovered a lot of uh, hidden tourist gems in our backyard. We started to develop those to make uh, them more attractive to foreign visitors. And let's keep up the good job to make uh, European touristic uh, landscape more diverse and more green. Thanks. Thank you very much, dear colleague. The floor now goes to Mr. Harris Theotharis from Greece. Uh, let me um, start before sharing my experience uh, of the past uh, few uh, months with the pandemic as a Minister of Tourism of Greece by thanking um, Alessandra Priantev of the UNWTO uh, for her kind words and uh, to say that without her support, our ministry and other European ministries would not be able to recover uh, the way we did uh, last year. Now, we are in the midst of three crises. The, uh, the pandemic is not over. We have the global um, um, price crisis, and of course we have the war in our backyard. So it's important to start uh, discussing the lessons learned. The first, in my view, lesson is that we remembered that sustainability is not just about the environment or cultural uh, diversity. It's also the economic and the social uh, dimensions of sustainability that we have to take into account. We saw the collapse of the tourism industry. Minus 86% was a number that the UNWTO gave us. Uh, that collapse uh, created a lot of hardship. Now, the second lesson is that without international cooperation, we cannot um, uh, recover uh, and be able to work uh, in the tourism industry. It's an international endeavor and it needs international cooperation. Now, Europe managed with the great difficulty to come up with uh, specific rules in terms of travel uh, and the uh, um, Greek proposal of the digital green pass was an important part of that. Uh, and this is why um, uh, Europe recovered most than any other uh, region in the world in terms of tourism. Uh, already we know that tourism, uh, Europe is the most uh, touristically de developed region and it recovered better uh, than else. And I urge uh, the countries to sit on the table now and discuss common rules for the next day. Uh, perhaps in October, perhaps earlier, we might need to reinstitute travel restrictions and we need to do that in a way which is coordinated and escalated. We didn't manage to do it very, very well during the crisis we, uh, this is going to be time well spent uh, if we invest in common steps. Now, the, the third uh, issue is the complexity of the next steps. Uh, we cannot underestimate the task that we have uh, in our hands. Uh, first, to rebuild the industry, uh, the recovery plans for the industry, to refocus the governance policy to promote optimal destination management, to strengthen the industry, to su uh, achieve sustainable, responsible, and smart tourism, and of course to plan for the future uh, by promoting the strategic adaptation of the sector, taking into consideration the mega trends and of course the uh, Green Deal, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The uh, fifth issue uh, is funding. Uh, we are talking about SMEs by and large, and SMEs are not necessarily uh, uh, bankable uh, so easily as larger corporations. As a result, uh, we need to do a lot more about funding. We welcome the uh, platforms, the guide uh, of VU funding for tourism, etc. those initiatives that provide more visibility, but we also support the creation of specific budget lines at the European level for tourism for the next programming period in order to solve those solutions. Um, the penultimate uh, point is how important data harmonization it is to be able to um, deal with all this uh, crisis. We have a multiple crisis management, and I think we require more data. A successful transformation requires more data and more harmonized data, and I think that's another area that Europe can work together. Uh, and finally, I'm closing uh, this uh, conscious of the time, dear colleagues, by saying that the recent waves of successive crisis has shown us uh, one thing. Tourism, the tourism sector, on the one hand, is the most vulnerable sector of the economy, 
And on the other hand, it's one of the most socially important sectors uh, of the economy. Jobs, youth, women, and SMEs all depend more on tourism than the rest of the economic sectors for their well-being. Therefore, if resilience is going to be at the core of our policies, we must start with the tourism sector. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. The floor goes to Mr. Daniel Milewski from Poland. Tourism harnesses both the environment and our ecology. Tourism is not only an industry, but uh, it is also a way of life for hotel and restaurant owners across Europe. In, Polis, in, Pol in Poland, uh, tourism generates just a few percent of our um, GDP, uh, which means it has huge potential for further growth and job creation. Tourism not only links many sectors, but it uh, also has a great social value because tourism connects people with places and with ideas. Our yesterday evening was an excellent example of this. Thank you. Uh, in other words, tourism celebrates uh, heritage and prepares pathways for our future uh, gen um, generations. That is why we decided uh, to support tourism industry when hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, we launched a rescue program that saved thousands of tourism jobs across the country. Uh, and as soon as restrictions were failed, uh, were lifted, we supported domestic tourism, uh, encouraging families to spend holidays in Poland with uh, tourist uh, vouchers and other similar initiatives. Um, and yes, then we saved the tourism industry, but now the same industry is saving others. In recent weeks, more than two million of our Ukrainian sisters and brothers have crossed the Polish border. Many of them have uh, found shelter in hotels and pensions for free. Many of them are being fed by local restaurants also for free. This is what sustainable tourism is all about. It's a pillar of our nation's social capital. Um, that is why I want to urge you, our European partners, to harness instruments and initiatives that are focused on climate, climate locality, heritage, and above all, people. Um, we have seen in recent times that the tourism industry is not, not just about generating wealth, but about supporting our values, uh, our very social cohesion. In other words, tourism is doing much to preserve the very way of life. We invite you to Poland. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Now we're we'll going to Mr. Jakub Rutniki for much Poland. Thank you here. And uh, you know, of course, uh, French is a brilliant country, but uh, Poland is the best place to spend holiday. So really recommend. And, and uh, um, because uh, we are talking about how to be close to nature. So I think during the, this very difficult time when um, after COVID, uh, ag uh, agro-tourism is a uh, it's a part of business uh, which we can very focus on. So it uh, really is a, it's a good time to start talking about this. But, you know, uh, we associate tourists with safety and peace. But everything is uh, changing uh, during the war in the Ukraine. Ukraine fights for um, its independence, but what is a very important fight for us and our safety and European values against Russian enemy. Polish border across more than two million refugees from Ukraine, especially women and children. My friends, something about this, really, uh, hotels, people from Poland, you know, we are opening and we try to do our best, but it's uh, quite difficult when we talk about such a big amount, two million people, and maybe will be, uh, will be much uh, more. We have to work very, uh, very fast how to use our resources of accommodation. It's, uh, in Poland, it's about uh, 
one, ma one million places in a hotel and agro-touristic place. It should be a great task for the European Parliament and the committees. It's a short time to find special finding to support our guests. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moving on to Italy now. The colleague. Thank you very much. The pandemic and the crisis that ensued has impinged very adversely upon tourism, but allow new needs and new trends to emerge. And against this backdrop, the development of new sustainable forms of tourism is a strategy which may help. And uh, mobility, which is more mindful of the climate and the environment, it is not just about initiatives taken to foster tourist flows, but measures which could promote the economic and social development of various regions, particularly those who are more far-flung or peripheral regions or mountain regions, for instance. Mountain-based tourism has positive kickbacks for jobs and a fundamental impact upon local communities, and particularly in local areas. So we need to preserve the cultural and natural value and traditional value of these areas. And I think with more sustainable tourism in the EU hinges upon the promotion of local and rural tourism. So the offering needs to be diversified so as to enable a, a, a greater usage of this kind of tourism, even out of season, out, out of season. So I think that the, the sustainable tourism uh, as a model could benefit from cable-based uh, 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 solutions, which are a key driver for mountain regions. Thanks to innovation and technology, we can have a model of sustainable uh, tourism seeking to strengthen the social networks in at mountain areas by also creating energy communities so as to optimize these resources to capitalize on such energy-based resources in these uh, regions uh, via targeted in interventions. This could be very worthwhile for def defining projects in cross-border regions and creating public-private uh, partnerships. Uh, now, to wrap up, I think that a form of ongoing and, and regular cooperation and exchange of best practices between the EU member states would be very important for defining measures for sustainable tourism more respectful of our regions. And I think this ought to be focused upon a long-term perspective. Thank you for having selected this uh, uh, project. And, and quite naturally, after uh, Poland, you come to Italy. So, Monsieur Sutias Nadias, for um, thank you very much for us, for Spain. The challenge of sustainable tourism is not a choice, it's not an option, it's absolutely mandatory today and tomorrow. And faced with this challenge, we have has to do it at a very difficult time as we've heard from our colleagues here, following a pandemic uh, that we still haven't recovered from and following the savage and cruel invasion of Ukraine, whose consequences and scope of consequences we still don't know, we have to think now how to bring in sustainable tourism. And I'm thinking of our Greek colleague here. It's not just about sustainable tourism in terms of the environment, but also in terms of our economy and our territory. And this question of the balance uh, between economic, uh, social, and regional cohesion aspects of our countries and environmental uh, challenges uh, is what inspires Spain's 2030 targets where we're trying to comply with the UN Agenda 2030 targets. And we know that to rise to this challenge, we have to have constant change. You know, if we think back 15 years, our pattern of tourist consumption is completely different. Uh, we know that back in 2007, uh, 2008, Airbnb started. And that meant a huge transformation that we had to address. And I say this uh, 
because faced with this challenge, uh, we have gone for quality and respect for the environmental and rural uh, uh, challenges, uh, and also for jobs, uh, high quality jobs. Uh, and uh, we have tried to maintain our productive fabric. Uh, so I think it's clear to us that we now have an opportunity whereby our model of economic growth be genuinely sustainable. From the economic and social point of view, and I assist, the focus has to be quality going for a digital transformation and also protecting our natural and cultural values. Uh, as been said here before, we need to protect our natural heritage uh, through UNESCO otherwise. Uh, and above all, we have to make sure there's a fair share out of the benefits and profits from the sector. In Spain, for example, we are going to take measures uh, to compact uh, depopulation. Yes, please conclude. I will, I will. And the Spanish uh, government uh, is aware of the important share of our GDP that tourism represents, so we have to make sure that tourism is quality tourism and makes a positive contribution to people's lives. Thank you. Thank you again. Sure. Now we have uh, Katerina Fulis. Higher in the European agenda, highlighting tourism impact on international sustainable development. Tourism is a sector in a need, facing multiple challenges. Uh, during the pandemic, travel and tourism were the sectors that were more hit. Uh, while we still have to face climate crisis, natural disasters, even safety, we have asked for a European mechanism for crisis management in tourism. Our proposal was adopted already, has been adopted already twice in resolutions of European Parliament since June 2020. But sadly, it's proven uh, that up to now that no country can do it alone in times of such crisis. A European mechanism for crisis management in tourism is an imperative element of building tourism resilience and sustainability during the green transition, but also for solidarity, for cooperation between individuals. Let us not forget that tourism has uh, people at its core. It's all about human interaction, and we strive through tourism for stability and prosperity. There is a need for European Union to provide adequate financial support and funding tools to small and medium enterprises. They are the backbone of European tourism, but at the same time, we have to ensure that uh, they are still competitive at the post-pandemic period and that they can make it to the green transition. However, their future remains at the moment at stake and millions of jobs uh, over still stay at risk. As right now, we also deal with the domino effect due to severe energy crisis, inflation, rising prices and the war's devastating impact. There is the need to develop thematic alternative tourism, sustainable sustainable activities to protect the environment and have more benefits for local societies. Uh, does the member states should launch national plans for sustainable tourism development uh, funded by the Recovery and Resilience Fund? And the human, since the human capital is the essence of European tourism, we need uh, better tourism education, better paying jobs. Digital and green transformation should be fair and inclusive. Um, Several areas that depend on tourism uh, face unbearable cost of transportation of goods, connectivity, infrastructure and standard of living, transportation costs. So the green transition should happen with a socially fair way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So what I suggest now to our speakers we hear from the panelists and uh, maybe they can take a couple of minutes each to answer some of the questions they've heard. Ladies and gentlemen, I was delighted to listen to you, to listen to your concerns, which are, which are, which are arresting. And I'd uh, like to remind us the right to holidays now. And UNESCO has decreed that each citizen has to be entitled to go on vacation. So we can 
about 50 odd years, grown. Some people call it predatory tourism, which has an impact on local communities, on the environment, and also it has an impact on environmental pollution. So we have to make sure that tomorrow's form of tourism is better balanced. It benefits more people and in particular it supports local communities, creating jobs, of course, uh, but when we say jobs, that means well-paid jobs, not exploitative jobs as so often happens. And as I see it, I mean, you are the elected representatives and I think you have a, re a responsibility to organize this form of tourism in Europe that in any case has a bright future uh, because Going on holiday, going to meet other people is a vital need for all humans to be properly balanced. We need to do that. But we have to put a stop to the disastrous pattern we have today with this, what are called, looting of the environment. We need strong rules. We need to have certification systems that back them up. There's no doubt uh, that uh, tourism is very attractive. There are lots of platforms interested in getting involved in that. Uh, and uh, we're often solicited by international platforms that want to take a large share of the cake. So I do have to finish, apparently. I'm sorry. But I think that tourism has to be sustainable. And uh, what we can do through our association and the French certification system has a full role to play. Thank you very much. I will quickly take a couple of points. I have to do it very briefly because there is a wide range of issues you've touched on. But I think, firstly, a lot of you have talked about the importance of local tourism. The pandemic showed us that this is the future of tourism because we saw during COVID a return of customers to our hotels, people we hadn't seen for ages because they traveled abroad. They'd been doing that for years. And then they decided that they would change and rediscover the pleasures and joys of our country and region. So, so I'm convinced that local tourism has a bright future and it's something that should be strongly promoted. And the second thing I want to address uh, is what you said about green and fair washing. Okay, quickly, please, because we don't want anyone to miss their train. That would be a problem. So you have a few seconds. So, yes, green fair washing is a problem because there are so many certification systems, and I think governments and the EU has to get involved with this so that consumers really know what they're being offered and when they are buying uh, their, their holidays. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Barrier. So we have now reached the time when we need to conclude. In doing so, I have to express my thanks to you because I've been honored by your presence here. I find this a very moving. I've talked of these last two days over everything that I think is important, the need to act and have interactions uh, between the local, regional, national, international levels. Uh, and this debate has reinforced my conviction that uh, when we complain about structures in Brussels or elsewhere in our countries, it's simply because politics is all about uh, technological structures. So it's up to us to take hold of the system and make sure that we have our role to blame. I'm sure that this meeting will have major and positive repercussions going forward. So thank you all very much. And could I offer you a little gift of some of our local specialities to take back home? Thank you.